This is Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis. Released by Capcom in 1988 in arcades and on the Sega Genesis in 1989. It's a side-scrolling action platformer. It's the sequel to Ghosts and Goblins, but Ghouls and Ghosts is a much better game in my opinion. There's also a sequel to this game on the Super Nintendo called Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and that game is the most difficult in the trilogy. You're Arthur, a brave knight, and you must rescue the princess from Loki. Loki was known as Lucifer in the arcade version of this game, but they changed it, I guess, to make it more North American consumer friendly. So Loki has stolen the soul of the princess and has released all his minions to wreak havoc on the lands. This game is very difficult, as you will notice I'm playing it on the practice mode, which is really the easy mode. I don't know why they call it practice, because towards the end of the game, it's really hard even on the practice mode. Professional mode is hard, but not impossible. I just played practice for the review to show off the different levels without dying so many times. This game has an unlimited continues, so that helps with the frustration factor. At the end of each level, you will face the level boss. You must defeat it in order to advance to the next level. Some of these bosses are easy, but some are really hard, like the Eye in the Cloud boss and the Giant Bee. There are several different weapons like the spear, the dagger, the sword, the axe, the shield, and a strange blue flame weapon which I find useless. When you get hit you lose your armor and Arthur runs around in his boxers until you find another chest with armor. If you already have your armor on and you open up a chest with armor, then you get the magic armor. The magic armor gives your weapons magical powers. It's a nice touch to the game, but I rarely use the magic. The most useful weapon in the game is the dagger because of its rapid firing rate. The sword is also kind of useless because you can't throw it. When you open a chest with the evil magician in it, he turns you into a duck if you have your armor on, or an old man with a cane if you are in your boxers. When you reach the end of the game and defeat the giant bee, you are told you must go back to the beginning and put on the magic armor and the goddess will give you the psycho cannon. You are told that this is the only weapon that will defeat Loki. So guess what? You get to play through the entire game again with an increased difficulty factor. The psycho cannon is very powerful but has a really short range. If you have the magic armor on when you have the psycho cannon, you have longer range with it and also it deflects enemy fire. When you face Loki, the first thing you notice is he's really big. He takes up the whole screen and he's sitting down. The first time you see him, you think there's no way, but he's really not that difficult. He fires at you and when he misses and hits the floor, it's damaged and turns into a hole that you can fall into. When you defeat Loki, all the souls he has trapped in his body are released and you also see the princess's soul leave. A bird brings her body to you and her soul then enters her lifeless body. She is revived and runs to you. You are treated to scenes from the game during the credits and then it says the end but with a big question mark which is handing at the Super Nintendo sequel.
This is a great port of the arcade game. The graphics are very good for an early Sega Genesis release. They are bright and colorful and well defined. There are a few glitches but overall is very nice. The sound and music is awesome. Each level has different theme music and the bosses also have their own theme music. The controls are very tight and responsive. This game has a good replay factor because it's so difficult and you really want to master it. If you're into retro games, then this is a good one to start with. If you have a Sega Genesis, then this game is a must-have. Playing this game again brings back a lot of memories. This is one of the two games I purchased when I bought my Genesis back in 1989. Platforming is one of my favorite genres and this one is great. Overall it's really fun and one of my favorite Sega Genesis titles ever.